Okay, we have understood about two-tailed test and we have seen an example with respect to the two-tailed test. Now it's time to move on to the one-tailed test or one-sided or one-sided right-tailed test in specifically. Okay, so let's see what's the example that is available for us. So example two. Test the hypothesis that the new mean lifetime is greater than 1570 hours using a level of significance of either 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 and that's what is our question. So let's begin with uh, formulating the uh, hypothesis but before that if you see the question it's clearly asked if it's clearly mentioned that the new mean lifetime is greater than 1570 hours which means it's positive it's it should be greater than the hypothesized mean which mean that uh, uh, it is one sided it's one sided it's one direction it takes one direction so that's the reason we call it as a one-sided test obviously as it is a positive value it's greater than the mean so it's going to be positive value so that's the reason we call it as a right tailed test so formulation of uh, null hypothesis null hypothesis is mu sub x is equal to 1570 hertz or we can also have mu sub x which is less than or equal to 1570 hertz. These are the two ways of formulating null hypothesis for one-sided right-tailed test. The alternative hypothesis is mu sub x greater than 1570 hertz. That's what is our alternative hypothesis. So here, which is right, which is wrong? Because there are two formulations for us. Uh, uh, either H uh, null hypothesis, uh, which is on top, or null hypothesis, which is at the bottom. So which one is right? So both formulations can be correct depending on the context and the specific research question you are investigating. So first formulation mu sub x is equal to 1570 hertz and mu sub x alternative hypothesis is mu sub x greater than 1570 hertz here we are testing whether the population mean which is mu sub x is greater than or equal to 1570 so the null hypothesis uh, h sub 0 assumes that the population mean is exactly 1570 hertz this is also a one-sided right tailed test but the difference is that the null hypothesis assumes an exact value of 1570 hertz rather than allowing for values less than 1570 hertz and on the other side we have a second approach where the second formulation where h sub basically mu sub x is less than or equal to 1570 hertz this one i'm talking about uh, and the mu sub x is greater than 1570 hertz so here we are testing whether the population mean mu sub x is strictly greater than 1570 hertz so the null hypothesis h sub 0 assumes that the population mean is less than or equal to 40 
1570 years, while the alternative hypothesis assumes that the population mean is greater than 1570 years. So, this is a one tailed right, one, ta one sided, one tailed right, right tailed test because you are only interested because you are only interested in detecting an increase in the population mean. So, the difference in from the both approaches perspective, the difference lies in the assumption made by the null hypothesis regarding the specific value of the population mean. So, the choice between the two formulations depends on the specific research question and the hypothesis you want to test. So, for us, the approach that we have taken to solve this example is uh, mu x, mu sub x is equal to 1570 hours and mu sub x greater than 1570 hours. So, that is the reason I have, um, I have highlighted these two uh, text fields with colors and this we are not going with. So, this is our approach. Mu, first approach, mu sub x is equals to 1570 hours and mu sub x greater than 1570 hours and this is our approach. We are not going with this uh, middle level approach. I hope you got the point. Now, let us uh, move ahead. So, as usual, the initial steps remain same. So, z score calculation remains same. So, as since mu sub x greater than 1500, 1570 includes uh, numbers that are greater than 1570, this is a one tailed test, specifically one sided right tailed test. From the available data, the normalized value of the sample mean is same, remains same x bar minus mu sub x uh, basically sample mean minus hypothesized mean divided by standard deviation of the x divided by square root of uh, sample size square root of sample size and we got the 2.50 that uh, remains same now let's uh, take the level of significance because we have two questions to be answered first at the at a level of significance of 0 0.05 so that's what uh, we are going to take take up first okay at the 0 0.05 level of significance obviously at that level of significance uh, the critical value is the critical z score or critical value is 1.645 here that two on right side. So, we choose Z alpha, Z sub alpha is equals to 1.645 for the 0 0.05 level of significance. That's what I'm going to uh, show you visually. So, here if you see the plot from 1.645 which is on right side positive one from there till right extent till the right dead end the complete region is called rejection or critical region and here this is 5 percentage this region is 5 percentage of the total plot total uh, normal or z distribution curve so this is 5 percentage and this is called rejection rejection region on other side from left of 1.645, this whole area is called as acceptance region. You see that? The whole, the whole area is called acceptance region. So, even if you get your z-score on negative side, still it will be accepted. But the value that we got is 2.50. Let's see what's going to happen. since. 2.50 lies in the rejection region because our rejection region is after 1.645 right side of the 1.645 and 2.50 lies inside the rejection region that you can clearly see here. You see that? 
your 2.50 here exactly it lies in the rejection region so what we are going to do is we reject null hypothesis at the 0 0.05 level of significance and thus you can say we accept the alternate hypothesis so this implies that the difference in the mean and lifetimes is statistically significant so now let's write a piece of code for that so let's go for one sided one tailed or one sided right tail test okay so that's what uh, we we are gonna do here so it's five percent as level of significance and um, b it is one percent is level of significance okay so next one sided right tail test right tail test that's what uh, we are going to do now okay so by and large uh, till calculating the p uh, z score it remains same let me copy this exactly and let me show you the z score also only thing changes is alternative hypothesis which is greater than uh, 1500 1570 hours 1570 hours rest all remains same okay uh, let me print the z score here so let let's see what the z score we got uh, by and large it should same it should remain same yeah it's 2.5 exactly so now calculating the p value varies slightly because there it was uh, there it was two tail test but here it's one tail test so i have to remove this okay and uh, let me print this or else I will use a different formula. Let's make it simple. We should not, uh, yeah, one minus norm directly. I called up stats. Okay, from stats, I can call this. Okay, print p value. This is my one. Okay, it's 0 0.062 because it's not two tailed test, it's one tailed test. Obviously, it would be 0 0.062, which is off of it, which is actually a half of it. Okay done so we got the p value we got uh, z score 2 now it's time to do the one tailed uh, now it's time to uh, do one sided one tail test with respect to the uh, 5 percent level of significance okay 5 percent level of uh, significance okay so yeah let's take uh, a level of significance let me put it in other way alpha underscore one underscore one is 0 0.05 so now let's perform the hypothesis test so here if p value less than alpha 1 that's what the level of significance we have here then we have to just print uh, reject null hypothesis reject null hypothesis
reject null hypothesis which is at the 0 0.05 level of significance so which means uh, the mean lifetime which means the mean lifetime is greater than 1500 1570 hours or else okay or else uh, else we have to print or else we are we fail to reject a null hypothesis we fail to reject null hypothesis okay so that's it uh, it's done now let me execute and see what this happens okay so it's pretty clear we reject null hypothesis at the 0 0.05 level of significance the mean lifetime is greater than 1570 hours and the same we can the same outcome we got here also with respect to this you see that our conclusion or inferences from one sided right tail test for this example is uh, we reject null hypothesis at the 0 0.05 level of significance and thus accept alternate hypothesis. Uh, this implies that the difference in mean lifetime is statistically significant. And one important point to be is, so I use uh, alternate hypothesis. The, this, uh, the symbol for alternate hypothesis, HA and H1, uh, interchangeably you should not confuse because that's if because it's a international notation you don't need to worry about that uh, sometimes i use h1 and a ha so because so that uh, you will be in touch with both the notations but both are same either h sub a or h sub one okay so now let's move on to the second example where uh, we are going to do the same with uh, respect to the level of significance of uh, 0 0.01 okay so at the 0 0.01 level of significance the critical value will become uh, will 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 move on to the far right far right on the positive side so this is how it looks so uh, rejection a uh, region has moved to far right it's 2.33 that's what is our critical value critical z score is 2.33 because it's just a one percentage of level of significance you have a 99 percentage of confidence interval you have that's 99 percentage of beta and one percentage of alpha so that's the reason your uh, rejection region has been squeezed into the right side has been pu pushed into the far right of your normal distribution curve whereas this is your uh, acceptance region the acceptance region has been increased a lot you see it's too big it's too big the acceptance region is too big whereas your rejection region has been pushed far right and this is how it looks now let's so since z score is 2.50 which lies in the rejection region you see that exactly this is your z score which actually lies in the rejection region so because of that what we say is the z z alpha which is your critical score at the 0 0.01 level of significance which is less than z, z score 2.50 thus we also reject null hypothesis at the 0 0.01 level of significance and we accept alternate hypothesis and let's write the same code for this so here okay so this time uh, it's b one percentage of uh, 
level of significance this time okay so let's uh, take the same piece of code but before that what we have to do is we have to do a slight change in uh, yeah p value remains same our alpha value will change let me directly copy this here what we'll have is alpha 2 alpha 2 would be 0 0.01 rest all remains same so let me change this to alpha 2 if it is less than alpha 2 reject the null hypothesis and the mean lifetime is greater than that or else it would be failed and here is the result here is the conclusion or inference is from that reject the null hypothesis at okay just a minute i have to change this 0 0.01 reject the null hypothesis at the 0 0.01 level of significance the mean lifetime is greater than 1570 hours and that's what the conclusion or rest inferences that we got from here also and that's how we do one tailed test or one sided right tailed hypothesis testing using z score